I'm Haitian. Like being Haitian is is a very deep part of of who I am. And um, it kind of, it does come out in my work because uh, growing up, you have a stomach ache, you have a headache, and you tell mommy, you know, I ha you you tell her what's aching you, and she was just kind of like go out in the backyard and like give you some fay, you know, Haitians call call the herbs the med fay. And you never really questioned what it was. You just knew to drink it. Most of the times it was nasty. It was bitter. But you got better. You didn't know how it quite worked, but it got better. And also my stepfather um, had a full-blown garden in the back. He grew lalo. He grew pima. I mean, it did start with my grandfather. Mm. Um, but I never met him. I just knew that he grew a lot of agriculture. He made his money off of um rice fields like my grandfather grew a lot of rice and built his wealth off of that and i've kind of fully appreciated that in the past year as i've graduated and tried to figure out what unique part of myself i want to bring to my medicine my culture kind of came into it mm -hmm. right and so just reconnecting with nature in that way from the perspective of like my own people mugwort that I transplanted from uh, Semi Valley, which is a, a place where I go to hike, but also there are medicinal herbs along the pathway that um, I like to uh, harvest. This one is called mugwort. I um, can be used for reproductive issues. Like if you've heard of the vaginal yoni steams that are popular right now, uh, in the herbal blend that is used for this for the herbal steaming is mugwort um, you go to like one of those Korean spas and you get a yoni steam done uh, typically mugwort I can almost guarantee you mugwort is in there because it helps balance I mean the reproductive system on a holistic level you if you have any sort of energetic blockages that are down there or from any sort of trauma or life experiences that may have negatively impacted you that way, uh, it helps with that. Um, also, if you have painful periods, if they're uh, short, too short, too long, too heavy, if you have a lot of bloating, hormonal PMS issues that help balance that and treat that as well, just through the steaming. You could blend it with other herbs or you could just do it by itself. On over here we have aloe, which I love, 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 love. It has saved me many times from kitchen burns. Whenever I burn myself, I just kind of come out here, harvest uh, aloe leaf, cut it open, and the gel that's inside of it, I rub it on my burn, and instantly you feel a cool down. It helps reduce scarring. That's the other reason why I like to use it. I love to use it on my body to moisturize. I have dry skin, and I've recently noticed that it actually cools your skin down when you use it on your body. Um, so that's another added benefit. So basically, I'm just, um, we got these branches, these eucalyptus bark from uh, the MLK Park right around the corner. And we're just cleaning them off. You see they got like all of this, this grit and grime and stuff from like past insects and stuff like that. So I'm just, you know, cleaning them off so that I could place them on the wall. Yeah. They had us, they were looking kind of crazy pulling that bark off the tree. <laughs> it was me and uh, Christopher, Katia's little cousin. It was fun. It was a good time. So we like to have events and stuff like that. and. Uh, we're going to have an event in a couple weeks. So this is a photo wall. This is going to be a photo wall. I, <laughs> I, it's like a Wakanda Forever photo wall. Um, so I'm making these necklaces. We're going to have people take pictures of, you know, feeling empowered, feeling like a Black Panther, because, you know, we, all, we, we are all kings, right? <laughs> so um, let me say that for real. No, we are all kings. We are. We are. It's not a joke. So. I'm a researcher. You know, I got a PhD from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Tar Heels, <laughs> um, in communication studies, but specifically in performance studies. And so what I do is I study the way that humans communicate, the things that it takes for us to be human. Like, what, what does it mean to be human? And for me, to be human, it, it means to perform. 
Uh, we're all performers, you know. We perform our race and our gender and our ethnicity and things like that. And so getting to the garden, uh, all of that research came in uh, because space is also a performance, right? I feel like our space, it performs itself, you know? Like it, it, it is what it is uh, and it doesn't really try to be anything else because it's, it's a performance of itself. Um, so the garden is very much related to my research. I, I like to create things that tell stories, you know, I, I'm a storyteller. I think um, one of my first inspirations, her name was Ebony Utley. She was a professor at Cal State Long Beach and she was the one who was like, you, you could get a PhD. And I was like, what? <laughs> I ain't trying to get no PhD. And it was because of her that I applied. Um, and then um, Renee Alexander Craft was my mentor. Della Pollock was a mentor of mine. Um, so these are these women they really helped to shape how I think and you know about my research. And then of course my mom, you know, and my sister and my nieces, my older sister and my younger sister, um, they they really inspired me to to keep creating things, to keep making things, uh, to keep finding the beauty in life because they give me so much. They show me so much beauty, you know, and so. I don't know, they, they, they're definitely an inspiration for me. I would have to say, um, the first thing that comes to mind is just the women around me. You know, like um, my mother, my grandmother, my aunties, um, the women that I work with. Like, nature is my inspiration, you know? Um, I just learned so much being in my garden and connecting with my plants. It just takes me to um, another, another universe. And I will say, um, you know, what takes me to another universe is you. You know, you're definitely an inspiration. She is the inspiration behind the art garden in L.A., you know? So when I was in medical school, I started something called the Cocktail Garden. It was just a way, I was feeling kind of lonely, and I just feel like I needed something to connect to when I got home. So um, it's like, man, I want to start a garden in my deck. I had a deck that overlooked this beautiful valley. So I went out and bought some plants. I think I started with lemongrass, uh, rhubarb, lavender strawberries, like all of the little herbs and fruits you could use for, for cocktails. Grew it. Some of them made it, some of them didn't. The one that thrived was the, my passion vine that I got, which I have right over there. Um, so it started, it started uh, this concept started in grad school and it's evolved into me uh, building my practice off of three main principles, and that's nature, ritual, and community. And the cocktail garden is a way to engage community. It's a way to engage nature and the ritual of making something for someone and watching them enjoy it and, and get them grounded and watch them socialize and, and connect with people around them. So, and I also like for things to be beautiful, so I like to um, dress my space up with nature. I love a lot of texture. So this is like, just kind of laying out, designing my, my bar. I made some um, elder liqueur. And uh, the, this elder actually harvested from the same valley that I got the mugwort from. Uh, summertime is when elder grows everywhere. Uh, Elder is mainly used for like immune support, really good for flus. If you're having the flu, it helps you um, get a fever and sweat it out. Uh, we need the fever to kind of cut through that bacteria and that virus that's causing the symptoms to begin with. So this is a good, uh, what we call a diaphoretic, you know. Um, but it's also tasty. It has this very um, light, floral, lemony taste. And one of the recipes that I follow to incorporate it into drinks is called the elder liqueur. 
is where you take the um, the flowers of the elder in the summertime because in the fall you get the berries and you use the berries to treat flus really good for flus and you kind of just kind of uh, infuse it in vodka for a little while because the alcohol extracts the medicinal properties from it and then um, I threw some um, elder syrup in there so from that same flour I made a syrup and I um, sweetened the uh, the uh, essentially started off as a tincture which is a medicine that we use in my practice but I turned it into a liqueur by adding some sugar into it can you grab me the, uh, the tea in the honey Tincture dropper. Thank you. There you go, with it. So we're gonna use some lemon balm today. I love, lemon balm is actually my favorite herb. I grew this in the garden, the cocktail garden that I started in school. Uh, I gravitate towards it because it smells really nice. <laughs> it's like lemony, minty. It's part of the mint family. So mint and lemon balm are like cousins. <laughs> um, the other reason why I like it is it's a really uh, good antidepressant. And and not to say, like, if you have depression, you take it. But even if, if you're just dealing with low mood or you have issues keeping your mood very balanced or you tend towards feeling sad and low and low on energy, the lemon balm is really good to use for that. And so this is what we're going to use for our cocktail garden today because of the taste the scent and um, you know people go to the bar to get their mood boosted they want they want to feel good and so lemon balm helps uh, kind of uplift the vibe so to speak so I bring it to the bar I have my mortar and my pestle where I like to sort of grind the herb to help it um, release some of its medicinal effects and it released a taste and flavor. Typically, I'd separate it from the stem, but you can leave the stem in there. I'm just kind of break it. Release the essence of it. bringing the elements of nature and ritual. I mean, you have the candle here. It's not lit because it's too windy out here, but um, just the element of ritual can help just kind of ground you in the moment and, and kind of bring some sacredness into the moment. I believe life is, is sacred like that. So just honoring the sacredness of life and yeah. Um, so we're just gonna pour the ice in here. Have some peachy ginger. The ginger is really good for um, settling the stomach. If you ever feeling nauseous, I think that's something that people normally use ginger for is for nausea whenever they have an upset stomach. And we're gonna add a dash of couple of ashes of the elder liqueur bringing that summer energy and boost that immune system and then I think I'm gonna leave the um, honey out just kind of I 
just love bringing Rose into any situation. Like, Rose represents love. I love the color of it. I love the scent of it. It's just a good heart energy, heart, heart, um, heart energy, heart chakra activation. And also, it's a great antioxidant. So people use it in a lot of like beauty skin products to help keeping your skin glowing and um, from aging. So powerful antioxidant as well. And I got some living lavender in there for the scent. It's kind of hot. I like incorporating the idea of having tea in a cocktail for added medicinal benefits. So while you're drinking, Sugar get some medicine in there. Sugar. Mass lemonade tea is what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> what I term communal healing events where I bring women together. And teas and lemonades and drinks is uh, what I use to get the women grounded and be like, all right, like we're here to heal, but we're also here to connect and have a good time. So bringing in the cocktail element into those events is, is part of my practice as well. Yeah, okay. it's really good. We we met in high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 High school. We knew each other in high school. Boy, high school. And I, but he, we didn't go to the same high school. Yeah. Her. He, go ahead. He went to the same high school as my best friend. They Palm were Beach in Lakes. a. Teacher Academy, you were in Teacher Academy? I was in the, um, the, the Law, law Pro, Academy. The Law Academy, yeah. you wanted to become an attorney and <laughs> a lawyer. So, but it was cool because I was at Lake Worth, I was in a medical magnet because mm -hmm. I want to be a doctor. You know, he used to, we used to call him Chief in the, um, in the group. Yeah, and I called you Dr. Duga. Yeah. Before I knew it, I moved to San Diego and then uh, I moved here to LA for a new job. And we were staying in this small little one bedroom in Hollywood. And she said she wanted a garden. And I was like, hmm, okay, yeah, let's do it. And she went and bought the collard greens and the Inca berry and the spinach. Um, and I was like, we need, we need something on this patio that's, you know, spruce it up. So um, I was, started putting up art um, and started creating little crazy things for the spinach to to climb up and before we knew it you know our patio was like full of plants and um, artistic like I had an ammo box and I put some license plates on it and then that's what the spinach grew in uh, and then it, one day we were like this what what is this it's 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 the art garden mm -hmm. you know um, and very much you know I'm the art and she's the garden and yeah, we come together and create magic. <laughs> oh, that's so corny. <laughs> you know, this, this garden is really, we made it for us. We made it for us to come and chill and have a space to escape. But we really made it for our friends, our community here in LA, because community is so important in LA. Um, so we try to uh, host what we call Soul Sundays, where it's kind of like a family reunion, if you will, or a Sunday where everybody gets together potluck style, and we have, you know, dinner. Last week we had spaghetti. Um, I want to have a uh, open mic right here on the deck. Uh, we have what other events? Um, sister circles come here all the time. I'm starting a writing circle, so look out for that. What what? Um, we really just want to use the space as efficiently, as productive as possible, not only for ourselves, but for everybody, you know? Uh, where you can come here and you can kind of feel rejuvenated and, and, and see the beauty of the natural world and know that you're a part of it, you know? Encourage people to create.
the last little Sunday we had, uh, like I said, we made spaghetti. Um, and I didn't make a vegetarian dish, and so I felt a little bad. So I came, I picked some of the tomatoes, uh, some of the basil. Yeah, it comes right from the garden, goes right into the kitchen, onto your plate. So, from garden to plate, you know. Um, <laughs> I think your favorite spot is the Ancestor Corner with the black rocks and the, the Oya. I, I think she's Oya. But the art, the flying woman, you know, in the chair, the Huey chair, I think that's your favorite spot. I think you spend a lot of time over there. Um, I think, yeah, you, you're drawn to that, that space. You know, when you create the, the Oshun, um, you created yesterday, not yesterday, last week. Um, I think you get a lot of creative energy, um, rejuvenation, um, in that spot. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know my baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> he loves being on the porch on his rocking chair. Like, he has an old soul. I do. And very southern, so like it the is. rocking chair on the porch. Yeah. Like, it, that, that, hit, that is his, he creates that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so wherever the rocking chair is, really, but it's always... Typically, that's on the porch. You're both doctors. You're both doctors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nurse and background. Uh, 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 oh. ER nurse. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you went back and. Mm -hmm. It's dope. And I still want to like it now. ER every really? Now. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So now I'm finishing up my women's health MP because I worked as a nurse for a while. She was doing infectious disease for a while. Went back, got my PhD. And then I was like, I miss patient care. And the more I think about it, and I kind of see how, like, you know, people are treated and how it's such a hard, like, medicine, 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 drugs, 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 I'm like, there has to be a way, like, you know, to do this better. But of course, you kind of have to just know the basics. You just kind of have to start there. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what this program is doing for me. Just starting the basics, how we deliver babies, how we do our PAPs, like, how we do the basics. Yeah, it will do it, but, you know. It's the possibility that we're in this yeah, yeah. depends on, um, what level of health you're trying to work on. If you're trying to work on an emotional level, you can use it. If you're trying to just use it on a physical level, you can use it. But um, it's definite, it definitely works differently from um, pharmaceutical meds. Like pharmaceutical meds, it's very targeted. It's like, we're going to mess with this pathway, biochemical pathway. We're going to like block this enzyme so that you can have more serotonin in your body so you don't feel so depressed. It doesn't work that way. Like, like this works on emotional level, spiritual level, physical level, right? If you if you are paired up with the right herbalist, someone who knows herbs and knows how to assess you and assess your needs and then create a blend specific to your needs. So it's really, really individualized. Whereas like pharmaceutical meds, it's just one pill for everybody. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy coming to the space. Um, I enjoy what Kritia and Kashif have curated. And I feel like the reason why I think I like it so much is because it, it feels like a sense of community. Um, I've contributed to the garden, so I feel a little bit like special in that way. Um, but I think overall, for it to be such a lush space in such a harsh concrete jungle, it's like, who would have thought? Um, so yeah, I appreciate what they've done here. I think we've also had some of the herbs, like, season some of the food that we've eaten. So yeah, of course we've benefited, of course. I mean, no, on top of, I guess, like, the what you can eat, um, but we've benefited from the space because, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of areas in which you can just, you know, sit on fire or you can sit and just kind of have a private conversation. I think it's taught me more respect for nature. Um, and given nature, it's its opportunity to do whatever it wants to do, you know, in its own beauty, in its own time. Because everything here has its own time. Like you plant something and you wait for it to grow. And it has its own timeline, its own energy, its own its own sort of like path. And so I think that's something that it's taught me, it's taught me patience. Because you have to have patience in order for this to, to grow and, and to, to bloom and to, to see it all the way through. I think a, an emotional challenge is, whew, 
like, and it really basic, like believing that um, your work is valuable, mm -hmm. you know, like just sticking with that, particularly when it's not bringing you um, the kind of income that you wanted to bring in or your ideas are just, you really, like your, when your ideas are really coming from a real place and it's truly unique, you start to question where you are in the world, like where do you just kind of like fit in. Mm -hmm. And so that's a constant emotional challenge. And then there's just, just the balance of like maintaining the garden and then like still do, you know, building on your whatever business, like practice that I have on the side. It's like, I can't spend all day back here, you know, like. It, it pulls you in, like if you, when you guys have a chance, like it's a space that kind of pulls you in and you, you kind of want to be there. And that's, and that's where I rejuvenate, but it's a challenge to kind of like balance that world and then the professional make money world, you know? Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, you know, the art garden is, is really a love story. And I think that is its greatest joy and its greatest challenge, you know, because I think we all kind of have a conception of what love is and when lo love comes it's like not always what you expect it to be you know and you have to learn how to grow and I think that's been mm -hmm. the biggest thing for me is that you know watching these plants grow has forced me to think about how I need to grow and uh, how I need to grow and love and let go of some of the preconceptions of what I thought love was um, and embrace the love that I have, you know, um, and really grow up into that, you know, and, and, and grow together, which is hard, <laughs> it's so difficult, um, but you got to want to put in the work, you know, and, and that's what we really do, right? Like we try to put in the work, whether it's in our relationship or in our garden and ourselves individually or in us as a couple, you know. Love is about work. The garden is about work, you know, because the garden is love, you know.